Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch Plays Kerbal Space Program, where in roughly four minutes time, we're going to be taking the opportunity to build upon our current reputation as Kerbin's foremost travel company. But right first now, what we're going to do is just uh, engage in a little bit of crash commercialism because someone wants a satellite up in an equatorial orbit. And you know what? I think that is well within the realms of our particular company's capabilities. Let's be honest here, we've sent the Kerbals to the moon. We have got them back. Launching a single tonne's worth of space junk into a high, high orbit around the equator is absolutely no problem for us at all. So let's talk spacecrafts and lifting technology. So you'll see at the bottom there, we have a swivel engine, three fins. I have allowed for these double fuel tank and engine segment on the bottom here to come back down you can see I've got uh, all the parachutes at the top there I can't remember whether I put a probe core on here or not uh, it's a little bit of an oversight if I did not we used three RC10s RJ10s RT10s indeed that's what they are uh, around the bottom of the engines to give us just a little bit of thrust when we're on the launch pad because the uh, to weight ratio here isn't quite as good as it could be just on this single stack so we had to go with that we're just coming upon our staging at the top of our arc here and you can see our apoapsis is up at quite a remarkable height there this is mainly so that when i drop the stage as i have we can let it crash down to the surface of kerbin without really having to worry too much about what things are doing now you'll see here why i've through sheer luck more than anything, managed to get my apoapsis um, directly opposed to uh, the periapsis that we need to be headed towards here. So I'm going to take full advantage of that. When I'm at my apoapsis, we're going to push up the other side of orbit to come up and meet the periapsis of the intended orbit. Obviously, with these launcher satellite up to a certain altitude type contracts you don't actually have any sort of targeting you can aim towards so there's no like purple marker pink marker for us to aim towards so we're just going to have to kind of do it off of the skin of our teeth and just just use our uh, innate pilot skills to be able to do this because you know i am dripping in innate pilot skills and that is not just some sort of empty boast there. You can see by this a beautiful camera shot here that I knew exactly where my flight was going to take place. I mean, who doesn't want to watch this beautiful hot plume of rocket fuel come out the back when the entire ship that I am in is bathed in darkness? It's the contrast, right? That, that's exactly what I'm doing it for and not at all because it just happened to be the way things lined up. Oh, no, no, no. But anyway, here we go. We've got our periapsis. Well, we've got our apoapsis up to touch the periapsis of the one we are going for. And that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I spend a little bit of time going, oh, why can't I target this? Because for some reason, I just completely forgot what everything was all about here. So to work around the fact that I have no idea what inclination my current orbit is compared to the, the target one, I remembered that the rescue vessels, or rather the vessels that we had to rescue Kerbins from, are actually on equatorial orbits, or at least the ones going around the planet are. So I targeted one of those. And that then gave me a beautiful descending node to worry about. I was going to do my inclination change down low again. But then once again, I was like, wait, if we do it when we're further out, it costs us less delta V. So what we're going to do is go out and make the circle bigger first. Little bit of a tip there if you're ever worried about uh, running out of fuel. As you can see, I am starting to run out of fuel. My delta V is getting a little bit worrying there. But I still have something like 100 odd um meters per second in delta v so that that should be fine we're, we're going to get down to about 150 before we start thinking about what our inclination nodes should be and having a look around that is everything before we even before we even got it set set up on a proper thing so there we go awesome yeah job done let, let, let's get back to this tourist thing that i was going on about right the first step in any travel plans is, of course, buying the tickets, and the same is true for Passer here. Uh, the second is boarding the craft, and I would like to say welcome to the new daughter company of Twitch Tech, Jeb's Jolly Space Jaunts. This, of course, being the first historic launch. We have actually taken some guys above the atmosphere once before, but this is the first time we are taking them full on into orbit, into space, getting everything set up and ready. Now, you notice that we launched from the space plane hangar. This is because my plan was to make an SSTO, but unfortunately, having a look at like the plane parts I had and what rocket parts I had, this was just not going to be feasible with what technology level we've got so i built ourselves a little bit of a rocket here but i'm going to keep the design in the space plane hangar so that as time goes on we can slowly tweak the design get it more towards a space plane that will go up and fly stuff uh, into orbit for us now we're not just going to talk about this particular flight obviously i want to 
lean quite heavily on the tourist aspect of the latest version of Kerbal Space Program and not just that I wish to use the resource gathering and stuff like that so what I want to do over the next course of a few episodes is like the first thing is to get the full size docking ports this is stopping me in my grand vision of everything that is to come the next thing is I want to make some sort of shuttle that goes up to a orbital space station around Kerbin where we will launch a few sort of round trip shuttles some going to the moon some going to minmus and possibly being a staging post for any future tourists that want to go off to the outer planets or maybe we'll actually have them in a a station around minmus or perhaps the moon no i think minmus and then running parallel to all that at every space station we will have a small mining operation so that we can refuel these shuttles uh, and get the SSTO up and down for like just the cost of the fuel and stuff like that so that tourism becomes a, a kind of ever running thing so that like every any contract that we see going into the space and uh, going into mission control sorry anything that gene tells us we can do we'll just pick it up straight away put them on the next launch up to the space stations and then like filter them off depending on where they want to go to either the Mun station or the Minma station or perhaps transfer them off to one of the big ships that will be being built in a slightly higher orbit around Kerbin. That, that's what I'm hoping for anyway, like really hoping for, but there, there we go. Uh, right, so right now what I'm trying to do is give uh, Passer here a view of that particular spacecraft right ahead of us. We had launched uh, quite well um, for such an approach and unfortunately it didn't quite work out the closest approach we're going to have here is about four or five kilometers which is quite nice what we're going to do is turn pass around so that she can actually look at everything that's going on here obviously as a tourist tourist flight this is going to be all about the spectacle right being able to see things uh watching the staging happen uh, i know you guys i know i was a bit talking of over the top of it all at the time but all the staging had little flary bits going off at the right time uh, so that Paso could be like oh look at all these things happening for us and there we go we just whipped over the top of that other spacecraft so that you know there was a bit of a close encounter what we're going to do is come up to our apple apps here which i have put quite far out specifically so Paso could have a look through that cockpit shuttle there uh, at minmus at the moon sorry uh, and at kerbin just to to see what is everything's going on Get, have a good old look at everything around this is space you have never been up here before enjoy it uh, and particularly looking at Kerbin, that, that's quite nice. Right, so what we're going to do now is try and bring our periapsis... Oh, no, wait. first we had to take bring our periapsis up above into an orbital uh, situation so that Passer's travel itinerary was finished there. Then we're going to watch a lovely sunset uh, and the, the, the city lights flashing out there. I'm never sure whether I like those city lights. They're, they're really good when you're up in space. They are really good when you're up in space. But when you are traveling around in a, in a, a plane or something like that, they, they just look a little bit naff. So my next concern is coming home and what I would do normally with any normal uh, rocket launch is to go up to my Apple apps, burn my Perry apps down to just inside the atmosphere and bring that down through a nice air brake maneuver. Now, I do not have air, uh, heating shields on here so I cannot go about it the same way. So what I'm doing is bringing my orbit down as low as possible so that my speed when we're coming into the atmosphere is also going to be as low as possible. We just kind of slow ourselves down as much as we can without actually entering the atmosphere. And then we start thinking about how we are going to enter the atmosphere. Like, what sort of height are we actually going to be grazing through to get these guys down without killing them? Um, and that, that is my idea right now. Uh, what we are actually going to do is come down just inside the atmosphere and then bring the other side down just inside the atmosphere and just try to bleed off speed without burning things up. I hope that bringing my periaps down to just about 50 kilometers, it will be fine. But of course, our first priority here is making sure that Passa has a good time. She is looking backwards at the moment. She looks out through the cockpit and sees this absolutely amazing vista before us. We've not quite got to the point where we are slowing down so fast that we have to worry about like um, atmosphere burn or anything like that. Though I do have some things stuck on the side of the ship that I, I know will start triggering like heating effects quite early uh will in fact start taking damage from the heating effects long before we see any actual visual heating effects but whilst we're up here up nice and high not quite really having to worry about that sort of thing again we're just going to let passer watch the whole world go by Switching over to Jeb and having a look inside our map view, we can see that we are actually on a, a uh, collision course now. And looking outside, you can see that the fins around the outside here are 
starting to take some damage. Now, the reason I have attached those is because I want to use them to try and keep myself up as high in the atmosphere as possible uh, before we actually get some real serious heating effects. So, so if we use them kind of like as mini wings, just to kind of try and try and skipping stone across the a pond you know where you like you flick, flick a stone across and it kind of skips at the highest point possible this is this is what we want to do we want to go along bleed off a bit of speed and about use the wings to pop us up a bit more and, and hopefully carry on like that didn't quite work out like that because you know orbital dynamics and shit don't work quite as you expect them to but it is working quite well and indeed i think we're going to bleed off as much speed as we need without having to uh, kill everyone which is my main worry here uh really worried about those uh, wings blowing up but I don't think we're gonna lose out massively one of the things there we go there they went uh, one of the things that did get updated with the aerodynamics model was the fact that we actually have lifting bodies on these round um, round capsules so hopefully that can stop us diving too deep into the atmosphere at any one time but if we have a look at our aerodynamic forces tab here which i very nicely brought up here we can see the amount of lift that is being produced by the uh, round bodies on my craft and we can also see the drag that's coming in uh, from the front there it's quite nice seeing what actually gets applied to the parachutes around the tops there you can, you can see that all coming through and changing my pitch and seeing how much uh, lift is and isn't created at different different angles is also quite interesting here but here we go we are coming down quite fast and quite hard we are about to start entering the cloud layer here but i think we're all right for that because we can't really see too much indeed actually as we have a look we are just about to drop in at about five kilometers here and drop down pretty nice and hard passa seems to be loving it this is what she paid all that money for is the ability to go up come back and go yes i survived parachutes pop open at one and a half kilometers and we are coming down at roughly a speed of four meters per second well within the impact tolerances if we point ourselves down we can see that the uh, the lights illuminate the ground so we're not too far away and if we have a look inside jeb's cockpit we can see we have got less than 100 meters to cross there so here we go, coming for, in for a touchdown for the first completion of our tourist mission. Woohoo! That's what it's all about. This is normally a time for celebration and jubilation, but I've just noticed that Jeb has earned the first man in space, or first Kerbal in space ribbon, which means for some reason, all my ribbons have been completely got rid of. I, I don't know why here and I don't know what's going on, but I will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time where we are going to do more stuff towards getting like, I don't know, an orbital station around Kerbin, maybe try and work our way towards those docking ports that I was on about and uh, little things like that. So I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye! Literally everyone's ribbons are missing and I don't know what to do about it.